The sexual misconduct trial against former Arizona lawmaker Tony Navarrete is underway. Jury selection for the trial wrapped up last week. Navarrete was arrested back in August 2021 on charges that he molested two boys. If he's convicted, Navarrete would be facing a minimum of 49 years in prison. Joining me now live in studio to talk about this case and several others is criminal defense attorney Hector Diaz of Diaz Law. All right, out of the gate, why didn't this case settle considering he could face 49 years in prison? So, you know, in Maricopa County and in most states, most criminal cases get resolved via what's called a plea agreement. It's a an agreement, a settlement agreement to resolve the criminal case. Here, again, we don't know all the negotiations, but here Mr. Navarrete probably believed that the plea was either too harsh or he couldn't make the admission that's required in open court that would have required him to admit the, to the sex offenses in this case. Okay, speaking of admissions, this was interesting to me. Apparently there was a secret police recording of a call back in 2021. It was between Navarrete and one of his alleged victims. He told the boy that he allegedly touched the boy's private area. Navarrete said, it was not okay, I regret my bad actions. Doesn't this hurt the defense? You know, this is a, a tool that law enforcement regularly use in these kinds of cases. It's called a confrontation call. And those come in, the state clearly is playing this during their, you know, their case in chief to show that Navarrete admitted to the to the conduct. And it's, right. it is difficult, it's difficult um, because the jury gets to hear Navarrete, they get to hear his words, potentially, you know, they're gonna listen to it and they're gonna ask themselves when they go back and deliberate, is that an admission to his conduct? The defense on the other side is saying, it's, it's a statement that has nothing to do with the charges, that here you had an accidental touch, nothing more, and that's what he was talking about. Mm. Okay, so then in light of that, do you expect Navarrete then to testify in his own defense? You know, we're, this, I think the state is looking to wrap up this week. I think if he's gonna testify, we'll see that early next week. Um, again, it's his right whether he testifies or not. Um, you know, I think the defense is going to feel some pressure to put him on yeah. um, in order to explain his statements. Right, right, his side of the story. Okay, let's move on to our next case. The owner of the Valley's NYS Tackle Football League accused of walking away with hundreds of thousands of dollars, leaving teams stranded midseason. An attorney representing the franchise owner, James Veith, posted on social media saying Veith and his company will be filing for bankruptcy. This has to be heartbreaking and upsetting for the families, especially the kids. I feel so bad for them. Absolutely. So what legal recourse do parents have? So, you know, it's it's unfortunate. It's tough here. I mean, they could potentially try to intercede in the bankruptcy proceeding. That's going to be really difficult. It's yeah. a long and process. And expensive. Yeah. You're going to have to hire a lawyer, and it's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Um, the other is potentially looking at the, you know, everybody signs an agreement when they enter into youth sports, uh, maybe looking to see if there's some kind of breach of contract, pop, you know, possibly uh, in terms of being able to recover any monies or, or whatnot. But it sounds like this individual has indicated that they really have no funds going forward. Yeah, well, so other than filing a lawsuit or, like you said, with the bankruptcy matter, I mean, is there any any other relief for them? So this is a situation where, you know, again, I think the parents are going to be asking the league owner, where did the money go? Yeah, right? and, they want you know, answers. Absolutely. So they're going to be looking for an accounting. There's a potential here that is this consumer fraud, right? And so, you know, the Arizona Attorney General's office, the Maricopa County Attorney's office, they have divisions that look into these kinds of concerns. And so I, I don't think that we're, you know, this is the end of it. I think we're gonna hear more about this as it as it goes forward, but you really feel for the, the children that lost I mean, out. They're the ones exactly who sadly is, you know, the they have to face the consequences. Absolutely. So all right, Hector, thank you so much.